is June 6, 2011, on this Monday live edition. Jim Tucker, who's traveling to Bilderberg this year, we're going to be in contact with him the entire time he's over there with his sources inside Bilderberg, one of the most important meetings undoubtedly in their history with so many things coming to a head on war, energy, uh, the collapsing euro, uh, the banking cartel trying to build world government on the ashes um, of the once free societies. Jim Tucker is joining us coming up in the second half of this hour. Dr. Paul Craig Roberts has a new article out today at prisonplanet.com and infowars.com. How the empire will prevail. Will Washington foment war between China and India? And uh, continuing, uh, we have Mike Adams joining us. Uh, he has a uh, report here. Forensic evidence emerges the European oak E. coli superbug was bioengineered to produce human fatalities. Meanwhile, uh, the British intelligence is saying give up all your rights and let Big Agra, uh, the folks that are engineering all this stuff, take over society and shut down the farms and ranches and things because Al-Qaeda uh, and, of course, uh, Lucky Charms uh, Elf uh, is behind it. British intelligence, Al-Qaeda may contaminate food after E. coli scare, give me a break. If you slip and fall on a banana peel, it's Al-Qaeda. And that's some of the biggest news of the day. I, I covered this some yesterday, but I want to go directly to it after the break. Gadon Adam Perlman, the American Al-Qaeda, call for gun violence merges with Osama's under-the-radar anti-gun agenda. Uh, right as Osama, Obama, excuse me, uh, that's not a Freudian slip. The government does run Al-Qaeda. Uh, Gadan called for gun violence, merges with Obama under the radar anti-gun agenda, which they are set to announce this month. They've been building up for several months. Right on time, Al-Qaeda comes out, Adam Gadan. caught red-handed with his videos being uploaded in the Intel Center's same video layer. Comes out and says, there's guns everywhere at the gun shows. Get them. Kill everyone. Attack. Attack. Attack the shopping malls. And we know behind the scenes, the feds have been building up this narrative with the local uh, police that are being federalized. And being told they're little secret agents on these power trips. Uh, this has been the narrative behind the scenes for years. Building towards the pretext to roll out TSA, Federal Security Goon Forces, onto the streets of America. You notice they've been beta testing it. Now it's all coming to a head right as the depression uh, expands, right as Moody's and Standard & Poor's say the U.S. may lose its dollar uh, world reserve currency as the IMF and World Bank openly call for global carbon taxes. It's all coming to a head right now uh, as the West tries to start World War III uh, between India, Pakistan, uh, that would bring in China, and, of course, we've got Dr. Paul Craig Roberts' report on that, and General Hamid Ghul and Webster Tarpley and countless other experts concur with our analysis that that is where this is all headed. So that is coming up later in the broadcast as well. Obviously, this is Bilderberg Week 2011 uh, in the mountain town, the highest mountain town in Switzerland where they filmed what, four different James Bond movies. Uh, doesn't get any more globalist than that. Uh, we're going to have uh, our reporters in England and the U.S. in constant contact with the reporters, multiple reporters, Luke Radowski, um, Jim Tucker, and others who are going to be attending the coverage of Bilderberg 2011. And we'll get key intel on what the globalists are planning from our sources inside. So very important week coming up. Stay it is Monday, Bilderberg 2011 kicks off Thursday. We're going to be talking to reporters uh, who are going to be in place in the mountain village in Switzerland. We're going to have Jim Tucker over there, AmericanFreePress.net, also for RT. Uh, the one, the only, Luke Radowski, founder of We Are Change, is already uh, in Europe, um, in Barcelona, preparing to make his way into Switzerland, out of Spain. And we're going to be talking uh, to other reporters as well, like Charlie Skelton. 
And we've got the Watson brothers in England who will continually be in contact with the reporters in Switzerland. And we have Aaron Dykes, Rob Dew, uh, Rob Jacobson, Kurt Nimmo, and the rest of the team that are going to be working very closely uh, with all of our uh, sources that are going to be at Bilderberg and some of our sources that have sources within Bilderberg. Now, why is that so important? Well, two years before they imploded the uh, subprime mortgage market, inside Bilderberg sources said that was the plan in 2008. We were able to call it with total precision in the film Endgame out one year before the implosion that they claim came out of nowhere. Jim Tucker was able to predict a full year before the fall of the Berlin Wall that the wall was going to fall and that deals had already been made <clears throat> between the Russian government through the East German government because they could no longer control their population and their own Stasi was starting to rebel against them. Because when a corrupt system loses the support of the general population, it cannot stand if they resist. Uh, and then it did fall. Tucker got laughed at for that. Uh, six months before Margaret Thatcher uh, was basically run out, uh, even though she had high approval ratings. Um, Tucker broke down that that was going to happen and then interviewed her after the fact, and she said, yes, it was Bilderberg that drove her out. Uh, you saw uh, three and a half years ago, uh, 2007, or now almost four years ago, I guess, um, the fact that Governor Rick Perry, out of the blue, went to Bilderberg. And the media ignored the fact that he was there until we forced the issue, and then the Dallas Morning News and others did have to report on the Bilderberg group. Uh, and, of course, we said then, look for him to run for president. And now that he's gearing up for that. Uh, also, three months before George Bush totally changed directions in 2008, uh, saying that he believed in global warming and wanted carbon taxes, Tucker said from Greece that that was the intel from his Bilderberg sources. He has three. Maybe I'm not even supposed to say that much. He has three. And he's told me off the record the type of sources they are. I'm just going to leave it at that. And he's proven he's got the sources. Uh, he's got the real sources inside, and we're going to be there, um, well, via telephone, talking to him, and via video Skype connections, interviewing Mr. Tucker. Uh, so we're going to be there through Tucker and through Luke Radowski, who's also going to have video Skype uh, there on the ground uh, in Switzerland. So very, very exciting. We're going to have great folks working with InfoWars there on site. And Jim Tucker is joining us coming up here in about 20 minutes uh, from now. Dr. Paul Craig Roberts dealing with his uh, breakdown analysis. How the empire will prevail. Will Washington foment war between China and India? Uh, we have that report. He's going to be joining us. And then Mike Adams. Forensic evidence emerges that European E. coli superbug was bioengineered to produce human fatalities. Now, I said that last Friday. And it emerged over the weekend that it is a super bug, probably engineered British Intel's responses to claim that Al-Qaeda made it. If you believe that, I got a bridge. I'm ready to sell you. Now, the big news, the economic news is huge. The China news is huge. Uh, the Kissinger Bilderberg Group news is huge. Uh, prominent Swiss politician, the equivalent of a congressperson, calls for arrest of Kissinger at Bilderberg. Uh, we've got it all here. But the biggest news, and I've been telling you, I've seen this in the cards, we've gotten this from our FBI, federal marshal, state police intel sources. You know we have those intel sources. In fact, the intel pours in so fast from confirmed sources, I can't even cover it. I can't even, um, my head's spinning. I can't even call back all the prominent, famous people that are calling me uh, who want to come on the show. I, I, I can't even, there's a huge awakening happening. 16 years ago when I got on air, we were drinking knowledge out of a uh, pixie straw, you know, the type that you stir your coffee with. You, you suck as hard as you can, you barely get any info. Now I'm trying to drink out of a fire hose, and I know you are as well. A fire hose turned up on high. And now a hundred more fire hoses are being shoved up in my face and your face. And the amount of information, it's just all out in the open. The globalists are moving at warp speed, there are times in history when more happens in a year than happened in the previous hundred. Lenin said that, many other uh, corrupt globalists, politicians, dictators, philosophers have pointed that out, that we're in a liquid state right now. The globalists have unfrozen societal, cultural, spiritual, geopolitical, economic systems that they'd already built, and the old order is dying, 
and the new order is being born. I was reading the foreword that Newt Gingrich wrote for uh, Alvin and Heidi Toffler's um, third wave book last week, and I meant to bring it in. It's sitting there in my office at home. I meant to bring it Thursday, Friday, and Sunday, and didn't. And, and I'd actually read some of their books years ago and read some of the writings of Gingrich. That's how I knew Gingrich was bad back in the mid-'90s and was meant to lead Republicans into destruction so that we wouldn't get a real constitutional movement through that group. And everybody knows he's for carbon taxes and for global government and the rest of it, or at least you should know that. But I was reading what Gingrich wrote and what that book calls for, how the old order has served the global elite well, now it must be destroyed, national sovereignty must be destroyed. I mean, this they write books. Gingrich writes these things. That's why he was chosen as a professor to then become a prominent member of Congress. He's horrible. And I have to hear mainline Republican talk show host endorsing him and talking about how great he is. This is like saying Joseph Stalin was conservative. I mean, literally, he, he openly says destroy national sovereignty. Just like Strom Talbot, who was the editor at Time Magazine before he went to work for Clinton or was it Newsweek, saying we're going to get rid of national sovereignty incrementally. And you've got this new Obama appointee openly saying, yeah, the, the, the cap and trade is a secret carbon tax. Well, of course it is. And, and I mean... That's what's frustrating is this stuff is all out in the open. And I mainly just marvel now that it's so naked. I use those terms a lot. Naked, brazen, open, uh, uncloaked, uh, in your face. And a lot of people are waking up, but there more should be waking up. I mean, every day I see articles where banks take homes they have no deed for that they never owned and never had a mortgage on, and courts just take the houses and give it to them. I mean, that's criminal, folks. That's these these people are are are, are unleashed. They run almost every state government. They run the federal government. They run all the regulators. They can do whatever they want. And I've got that news today. The good news is finally in Florida, and they're going to come after that judge. But the answer is. If other judges do the right thing together, if, 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 if other prominent people do the right thing, Hollywood people, government folks, talk show host, liberal conservative, it's time to break your conditioning and get out of this controlled, fake political spectrum we've been in. And, and for all of us to start telling the truth fully and going all the way or we don't have any future. But this judge in Florida said, yep, you had five months. You didn't have a deed to the house. They paid cash. You had no connection to it. You took their house, Bank of America. You didn't pay them the hundreds of thousands of dollars back. We're seizing your branch bank and sent the deputies in, the constables in, to take the cash out of the, ca uh, out of the till. Th that's what they do to you when they come take your house and come take your belongings. And, and, and Bank of America is, how do you do this to us? We're God. We own part of the Federal Reserve. We own you. And the judge is like, no, you don't. They should all be clapped in irons immediately. They've all committed crimes openly. This could end if we just wake up from the trance. And then police, people are going to bring you coffee again and pie again. I mean, I've talked to my family. I've talked to people that lived all over the country 30, 40, 50 years ago. The average cops weren't corrupt. Cops were in the local neighborhood. Everybody knew them. They were friends, and cops were into going after criminals. There were still some corrupt areas in Chicago and New York and Dallas in special squads who over time got bought off. But, but that corruption is tame compared to all over the country. I see reports every week now, Texas, Tennessee, New York, Michigan, California, Florida, uh, New Mexico, where cops just pull you over, including old ladies, people that have no criminal record, and you, the old lady's got $2,000 in their purse. The cop searches it without a warrant and takes it and says, prove it's not drug money. I remember 15, 16 years ago watching 60 Minutes uh, where uh, a guy was flying from South Carolina to Houston every year. And uh, he, he paid a down payment in cash and the rest by check later once the 18-wheelers showed up with all of his crepe myrtle trees grown in Texas. And he paid in cash for the ticket, and it turned out the ticket clerks make more money a lot of times off, off tattletale fees than they make off their year, you know, yearly sa salary. 
And it turned out the one woman that did it to this guy made over a hundred grand a year from air marshals. And they just took took the guy's money. It was something like twenty thousand dollars. That's been going on forever. I mean, you can't do that. You can't behave like that's tyranny. All right, I'm ranting. Because I, you know, I talk about how I'm overwhelmed. I mean, that's just opening up my mind and all the things I'm looking at and upset about. I'll go back to last year, Bloomberg and AP. I keep repeating this because it's gotten no attention. Prudential and others signed a secret deal in 99, now 12 years ago, to take all death benefits from World War II vets through to today. They take money out of your check in the military, put it in an insurance fund, and now when your husband gets killed or dies later of cancer at 60 or whatever, they just take your money. I mean, they take your house when they don't even have a deed and never owned any part of it. This isn't even just derivatives. They just take it. All right, I'm going to come back with the biggest news. Stay with us. This is the end. So David Rockefeller, the Queen of the Netherlands, representatives of the Rothschilds, they'll all be meeting with Saudi King. They'll all be meeting coming up in four days. It'll kick off in the mountains of Switzerland. And we got Jim Tucker coming up. At the start of the next hour, I'm going to get into this top story uh, in a lot more uh, detail, but it is so chilling to know that police, according to emergency managers, FBI, federal marshals, state police, and since then, since we were sent secret information years ago, not just MIAC and Homeland Security Reports and others dealing with the fact that the whole system is for gun owners, libertarians, landowners, patriots, uh, uh, in the fetters, Ron, you know, a, a constitutionalist, that the entire system is for the American people, not for the boogeyman al Qaeda. Now, it's admitted bin Laden was CIA, and he always was and still is up until his death uh, from kidney failure back in 2001. And notice Adam Gadon, grandson of the former head of the ADL. I mean, do you really believe al-Qaeda is following a overweight Jewish kid from, from San Diego? who uploads videos with the Al-Qaeda logo in the, in the same layer as the Intel Center. See, th this propaganda is all tailored at a mindless level for just the general public to kind of, in the background while they're cooking dinner here, Al-Qaeda's planning to strike. And all of our law enforcement sources, before it later leaked out in the news, showing my sources were accurate, said we're being trained that gun-owning militias are going to attack with Al-Qaeda at shopping malls and kill everybody. And we saw the beta test in Mumbai a few years ago, came out in the time in India, they're enemies with Pakistan, that it was not Pakistan that did it, but that it was U.S. and Israeli intelligence. I mean, that was in the times of India. The head of Indian intelligence went public and then got killed right after he talked about it. This is dangerous stuff. And so they... Uh, want to target shopping malls and other public places so they can then roll out TSA on the streets of America. Now, what's frightening is suddenly there's a full court press, we're going to cover this more in the next hour, saying that Al-Qaeda is going to hit the shopping malls. They're going to hit the grocery stores. And so see now, right after the government announces they want naked body scanners at all the shopping malls, magically Al-Qaeda comes out and agrees and says, hi, I'm Adam Gadon. Formerly Adam Perlman. And uh, I, uh, I'm the, the, the grandson of the ADL head, and Al Qaeda follows me. Oh, yes. I mean, Al Qaeda supposedly hates Israel, trusts nothing Israel does, it wants to destroy Israel, but oh, uh, their uh, leader is uh, Jewish. Uh, the leader of Al Qaeda is Jewish. They're now debating whether Gadon's number one or whether it's uh, Anwar al Awlaki. Oh, wait, he's hanging out secretly with the Secretary of the Army at the Pentagon, Fox News AP. Oh, wait, he, they run the underwear bomber on Christmas Day. Oh, got on the airplane by the U.S. government. Undersecretary of State had to admit it months after we broke it with Kurt Haskell. Eyewitness. I mean, but again, that's all tailored for the general public kind of cook, cooking dinner, making sloppy joes or whatever while the kids are playing video games and mom has got the TV on in the kitchen. And, oh, my gosh, there's that mean Al-Qaeda guy. He says he's, you know, Al-Qaeda, use the gun shows. Americans are stupid. They have gun shows. And you can go right in and get guns and then go kill everyone. 
And the meanwhile, Obama's like, see, I told you, we got to shut down those gun shows and ban semi-automatic rifles because Al-Qaeda says they're going to use it. And ABC News says Al-Qaeda found a weak spot. Our lax gun laws, they're going to hit us. And, well, I love the Second Amendment, but Al fighting Al-Qaeda comes first. Turn my guns in. I mean, direct Democratic talking point. Right as Obama gets ready to unveil his anti-gun agenda, this month, it's been announced, weeks ago, he would announce it in June, quote, under the radar, that's what the memo says, and here they are, and Al-Qaeda comes right out, and Al-Qaeda says, thank you for releasing our fighters from Guantanamo Bay. You make it so easy for us to attack you, right as they're trying to set the precedent in courts to never give people trials, including U.S. citizens. Gadan comes out and says, thank you for releasing Al-Qaeda. That really helps us. So they can say, see, Al-Qaeda loves the fact that trials are being demanded. And Al-Qaeda says, thanks for the Second Amendment. We better get rid of trials and due process and the Second Amendment because Adam Gadon, the Israeli operative, says so. In your face, 100%. And now he says, attack, attack. And TSA says, don't worry. We're going to protect you. Now, 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 coming up, we're also going to get into the incredible shootings on the border with Syria and Israel in the captured Golan area. Uh, and, and the way our media is saying, well, that's Israel did the right thing. Well, did Gaddafi do the right thing, shooting protesters, which turns out isn't even true? See, I mean, it's hypocrisy either way you slice it. We'll be right back with Jim Tucker with Bilderberg Intel. Stay with us. Okay, coming up in a few minutes, Jim Tucker of AmericanFreePress.net is going to be joining us. He had a report last week. Texas Governor Perry Bilderberg, ace in the hole. Is Texas Governor Rick Perry, the Bilderberg Group's Republican candidate in waiting in 2012? Well, we know that uh, Mitt Romney's also one of the horses they've got in their stable. And he's getting ready tomorrow to jump on a big uh, jet airplane and uh, fly to Switzerland, where they're going to be meeting uh, in the High Mountain uh, Resort of St. Mort's, where they filmed at least four James Bond films. One of the most beautiful places in the world, it's described, pretty close to the Matterhorn. The globalists love to meet in those high and mighty type places, uh, like they did at the North American Union meeting in 2006. WikiLeaks has now released that, confirming... Well, the documents we got through Judicial Watch that they plan the secret merger of the North American Union already in place with the EU. And Jim uh, is just an amazing individual. He was a news and sports writer back in the 50s and 60s. Uh, by the 70s, uh, he began to investigate Bilderberg Group. And uh, for decades, he was called a lunatic by the media. They said it didn't exist, that he was delusional. Just three years ago, New York Times said that. They said Jones was at the Marriott uh, in uh, Virginia, believing that there were elites there when there weren't. So they still try that some as well, thinking their readers are abject morons. Now, the reason this is so important is Jim Tucker has gotten scores, more than 20 that I can list, uh, pieces of intel years before it becomes mainstream news of exactly what the globalists are going to do. The fall of the Berlin Wall, the ouster of Margaret Thatcher, Bush to endorse carbon taxes, and then he did it and people were shocked. On and on and on and on. And he has intel, the only person who actually has intel directly in Bilderberg. AmericanFreePress.net is where you can read his reportage, and you can also subscribe there. Jim, thank you so much for joining us. What new intel do you have? Because I know you usually get a lot about their agenda before you go. What is the latest intel, Jim Tucker? Well, still pretty much unchanged from our last conversation. They are, of course, uh, determined to uh, keep the recession going through the year 2012, uh, or for whatever reasons that serves their purposes. And in spite of that, the oil price is going down. They're trying hard to uh, force them back up. They want Americans to pay $7 a gallon for gasoline. They've never quite gotten that far, but they're working at it. And more uh, good news from, uh, from Patriots. I've uh, been uh, told since our last conversation, uh, Bilderberg Insider, who's been very reliable for more than 20 years, uh, they're grousing and complaining about these dirty girties. That's you, me, and all the patriots around the country who object to the uh, Bilderberg playing uh, playing God. Uh, they're simply outraged. So uh, 
and they're telling us too that their Obama is their good friend, and he had to uh, disregard the War Powers Act so we could keep the war going in Libya, which they want to, as you know, want to uh, uh, use a, a spark plug to light up the entire Middle East. So they've forgiven him for that, understanding why he has to do it. Uh, now, specifically, Jim, uh, let's go back to 2007, and, and I went and looked it up. It wasn't just Lindsey Williams that said he had sources, and, and, and now we know Ken Fromm was one of them since he deceased, the former head of Atlantic Richfield, that, that they wanted to break our back financially by raising oil to 150. You got that out of Bilderberg. A year later, it happened. Then in 2008, you said... Folks aren't consuming like they thought they would. They're going to lower it again, and it that indeed happened. Uh, what are you getting on the energy front about what they're planning to do with the devaluation of the dollar? Oh, they're uh, uh, they've been a cheerleaders for uh, nuclear power plants since uh, the late 1990s. They discovered that's a, a great source of it. Uh, of wealth are them uh, when you build nuclear plants you're giving contracts to big companies uh, throughout the world of which they they own a uh, great portion and they uh, make great profits so they're very discouraged that their uh, host state of Switzerland has decided it's going to get out of the nuclear power business uh, I think Finland said it would too and uh, also they're very uh, concerned about the uh, euro uh, uh, going down and maybe the, they're even afraid the euro will simply disappear because when you get countries like uh, uh, Switzerland, a peaceful country where you're required to own a gun, uh, opposed, uh, saying they're getting out of the nuclear power business along with uh, two or three other countries, it's very unpopular in Germany. And uh, in fact, the, uh, Prime Minister Merkel, I think, is uh, wobb going wobbly on nuclear power, which she so strongly advocated. And that's very uh, distressful to them. But the more they grieve, the more we, uh, we enjoy it. Uh, Jim, going back to your source, you have multiple, of course, but one inside Bilderberg, particularly high up. Uh, more detail, uh, because from what I'm getting, but I want to put words in your mouth, are they panicked? Are they routed? Uh, are they in trouble? Uh, uh, you say they're upset about the anti-globalist movement, yourself, myself. Did they say that specifically? Uh, flesh out as much as you can for us uh, the state of their new world order, because from what you've just said, it sounds like things aren't going too well for them. That's true. Things have been going badly for the last several years. And for the last several years, we've had been quoting them as saying that uh, uh, those dirty gurneys on the sidewalks, uh, those primitives, well, they use a lot of expletives that you could not use in polite society, but they're simply outraged to find that they have protesters outside. They've always wanted their meetings to be secret uh, with no knowledge of them whatsoever. Now, all these years, they've had to see people outside screaming at them and protesting they're meeting. So that's got them uh, very outraged. In fact, they're reading about it in the uh, European press even now. Americans are reading about it in the American free press and hearing about it uh, from you. Uh, in Europe, a lot of major newspapers, the Guardian of London and others have uh, jumped into the ballpark and are telling uh, their readers what and where on Bilderberg and uh, raising the same kind of questions we do. So, so their hoax of saying it didn't exist uh, in your 35 years of coverage, what was it, six, seven years ago that the dam started to break and we started to see big mainline press coverage like we're seeing now in The Guardian and other big papers of what they're doing in secret? Uh, when did the dam really start to break uh, on their, on their cover-up? Uh, let me uh, stretch down here and pull out a note or two. It goes back, I'm sure, to the uh, 90s. Uh, First time we saw uh, protesters outside the gates. Uh, hold on just a second. He is getting his uh, notes. Again, Jim is a battle-hardened 
true uh, journalist with the yeah, straw, straw hat. Uh, go, go ahead, Jim. I'm backing up on it. Uh, it goes back to, uh, actually, to uh, Portugal, 1988 it? in uh, Austria, where uh, a few of the newspaper men came out. And that was the, uh, yeah, 1988 in uh, Austria. And uh, that was when uh, the readers did something I should have thought about long ago. So that year we had the story of where and when so early, as in something like November, that our readers across the sea in Europe, they had to pay a tremendous price because of the postage costs and all that stuff. But they had, uh, uh, they knew when and where on Bilderberg, so readers within a uh, 200 miles of conference called and said, should we alert the uh, local press? Should we tell our newspapers and broadcasters? And I said, yes, yes, yes. Now we send out a letter, as you know, every year, uh, urging readers within the area to do exactly that. I should have thought about it much earlier than that. But uh, uh, well, Jim, I understand the dam broke in the late '80s because of your decades of work uh, in Europe. But but even even seven eight years ago, our media here in the U.S. was still saying it didn't exist. Isn't that why uh, one of the reasons the mainstream media is so discredited now? Is uh, well, yes, you start off with the. Uh, control of so much of it. For instance, the Washington Post, as you and I'm sure most of your listeners are aware, uh, is controlled by Bilderberg. They've attended, the publishers attended every meeting since they first four, met under the name Bilderberg in 1954. I mean, they died, the successors of the Graham family uh, have always attended Bilderberg meetings along with publishers, New York Times and Los Angeles Times. Now, the Washington Post owns 170 newspapers, Washington Post Company, uh, big and small. Now, they can di directly order all of their 170 newspapers throughout the country to never use the word Bilderberg, no coverage whatsoever. And they better follow orders. They don't get, they don't get fired. Well, Jim, here's an example. In 2008, you and I were there. We knew Obama and Hillary were inside. The media, the number one story in the country is where is Hillary and Obama hiding? We called ABC, CBS, CNN, Fox, local papers. None of them would come, not even the local Virginia paper, but the Epoch Times came and covered it. So that shows the control that they're claiming. They don't know where Obama and Hillary are. The mystery meeting, we're there. We know they're there. The Secret Service goes in, the motorcades. We're telling them, and the media had such control. That's how controlled U.S. media is. European is not that controlled. Now, now Jim, in our precious time with you, other intel, if they're upset about the alternative media, you've talked about their moves to try to censor the press earlier. We've seen the UN a month ago, two weeks ago, our own media calling to start censoring the internet, to start internet taxes regulation. Do you have any intel on how they're planning to counter the internet and alternative press that's kicking their hind end? Uh, well, there has been some conversation about how to call up some of the uh, Newspapers that they don't control, and uh, oh, if I can say that guy who uh, bought up all those newspapers got in trouble, uh, owns most of the newspapers in the world. They said he's still our good friend. He's not allowed Bill Burke meeting anymore. Zoros uh, among them. Uh, he's still our good friend, though, although for political reasons, uh, being a convicted felon, he cannot attend anymore. So Soros isn't allowed to attend? Uh, uh, no. Uh, they're very pretty. They're very one of their founders, Lockheed uh, guy was one of the founders of Bilderberg. Not been able to attend, but he's still their good friend because of the Lockheed scandal of back in the 1950s. That was with Prince Bernhard. Yeah, P Prince Bernhard, right. I was trying to remember. Okay, now let's shift gears again in the time we've got. We appreciate you, Jim, joining us from AmericanFreePress.net. Uh, uh, and we're going to have links to your reportage throughout the week at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Jim, specifically, you talked about the spark plug Libya to ignite the Middle East. It's now admitted that U.S. and British troops are there, been there the whole time. They always meant to have a ground war. Of course, they lied. It's now admitted that they overthrew their old dictator, Mubarak. What is the larger strategy, the stratagem, the deceptive strategy? Why? why what's the larger geopolitical reason to destabilize the Middle East and the Central and Southern Asia in Pakistan? Why are they wanting to do that? What's the larger plan? I'm still trying to uh, hash that one out uh, with these 
turkeys, but we do know that they see their interest. Well, uh, war profiteering is one of the obvious ones. Uh, when you go to war, you make big bucks, and they're in the, uh, heavily invested in uh, heavy industry. Uh, they all are. So that's why they're in favor of Star Wars. Uh, that's why they, Star Wars is a good thing, really, but they uh, their motivation was uh, uh, profit. When you go to war, uh, you got you make a lot of blood money. So a big war in the Middle East, uh, which would be the rationale for uh, invading, invading Iran on behalf of uh, Israel, uh, would be a huge profit. And they're concerned now they want they want the war in Libya to expand and go real big uh, and inflame the Middle East. And it looks like that's going to be a tough one for them because uh, NATO is pounding them so hard, and yet NATO is one of their tools and tools. Okay, I want to briefly get into the the euro, their receivership arm, in, in so much trouble, and 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 this worldwide awakening to the private banking cartel. But your article in American Free Press, Texas Governor Perry, Bilderberg Ace in the Hole. We talked to you in uh, Greece at the time in two thousand uh, and uh, eight, and or two thousand and seven, and you said this looks like Perry. Uh, is definitely going to be running for president soon, just like Bill Clinton went there when he was unknown, basically. Uh, Low-level member of parliament, Tony Blair, a few years before. What does it signify having Rick Perry attend Bilderberg? Uh, well, it makes him uh, uh, Bilderberg property. As you know, when you attend a Bilderberg meeting, you take that oath that you'll reveal nothing, and you're supposed to uh, follow the orders like a good boy. And they all do. We've seen dramatic demonstrations. Uh, President George H. W. Bush campaign promising no new taxes. Read my lips. He said he's in favor of the Taxpayer Bill of Rights, which had been uh, first proposed by Liberty Lobby earlier. And uh, uh, within the uh, first year of the White House, he reversed himself and increased taxes and uh, uh, lost the election to uh, Bill Clinton, who, of course, attended uh, Billenberg a, a year, uh, one year before. So uh, there's a great price to pay if you disobey orders. in H.W. Uh, disobeyed orders and paid the price of uh, the White House. So did Margaret Thatcher, and you were able to report that before she was forced out. Uh, we're talking about uh, hiding uh, Hillary. We had a lot of fun a few years ago. Let's see, it was Lake Lanier, Georgia. And the staff down there told us that Hillary Clinton is there. They've seen her. She's there for more than a day. And she'll be there uh, until Sunday morning or something. So uh, she was positively identified by several of their own staff members. Just excited about seeing the First Lady. And uh, get back to Washington. I called the White House Vice, uh, First Lady's uh, press office. And First Ladies have their own big bat, uh, press uh, staff. And they said, oh, no, she didn't attend such a meeting. I said, no, oh, no, they said, we don't know where she's being. I said, yes, you do. You account for every moment of her day. I said, I'm prepared. I know she was there. I'm prepared to write positive. She was there, but her staff did not know. Uh, we'll call you right back. I said, you call me back in 15 minutes. That's what I'm going to, which was not true, but I was have to file my story in 15 minutes, as is, or we can fix it. They called back and officially acknowledged that Hillary, had, as First Lady, had attended the Bilderberg meeting. But they sure didn't like to, to acknowledge it. Jim, would you say that Bilderberg is beginning to run scared or is panicking or feels the world waking up to him, as Brzezinski told the CFR last year, that the world is waking up to the true elite and not their puppet front people uh, like Obama and uh, Bush? I mean, how would you quantify the state of this global imperium right now? I would say that there is all as nervous as a strumpet in church. Now, Jim, we've only got a few minutes uh, left with you. Uh, do you have any intel on some of the minions, uh, governors, members of parliament, m members of the Senate, 
that are going to be there under Bilderberg examination. You know, in the past, it was Bill Clinton, it was, uh, you know, other people that became president. Any word on uh, the agenda of uh, some of the things that, that they're going to be focusing on? Any other areas you haven't covered? Uh, take a video off head. I'll tell you, my mind's a little bit blown because a stupid cab driver uh, let me off at the wrong spot. Now, I've been here early and rested it went over my nose. Uh, I've been sweating like a Negro on Election Day in Mississippi and breathless from uh, where the cab uh, recovered, where the cab dropped me off at the wrong place. Life, life is such in Washington. Uh, of course, folks wouldn't know that old Georgian saying back when the racists would go after black folks for trying to trying to uh, vote and would to try to try to uh, keep them from their voting rights. Now the system just has their electronic. Uh, voting machines. Well, uh, uh, Jim, I understand that you are a bit winded, but uh, you're going to be getting in, I guess, uh, Wednesday morning or so uh, into yeah. Switzerland. Tell us about this location. Have they ever met there before? No, they've met in uh, Switzerland, uh, I think, four times before, but never in the same place twice. And rarely do they meet in the same place twice. At least 20 years will go by. The St. Moritz, Moritz is a, a resort community, not, not very big, uh, to get there, I fly into Zurich and take a three-hour train ride from Zurich, uh, Sweden, to uh, Moritz, Switzerland. Now, the intel I've gotten is they're, they're going to this remote area where it's also very expensive. Switzerland, the most expensive place in the world, for those that don't know, other than maybe Tokyo. But the country itself very expensive because they're very angry. You said a few years ago a quote was, the, we, we, we've got to implode the economy so folks are so poor they don't have money to travel and protest us. Uh, yes, that's their uh, broad program is to bring uh, to level uh, the world economically. That is, not raising the uh, uh, backward countries up to, uh, to our level, but bringing us down to their level so the entire world is uh, at a poverty level type of economy, more easily controlled. And uh, of course, the Bilderberg kids themselves uh, will never run out of ice cream. They'll live uh, uh, the same uh, luxurious life they've already, always lived. But for you and me and uh, the, uh, the general population, they, uh, they won't the American standard of living to go down so that uh, that's part of the $7 a gallon of gasoline, uh, a gallon of gasoline goal that they've set is to help that along. And the uh, food shortages and so forth will help that along. Jim, just two final questions in one point. Uh, a, um, after you get a chance to uh, take a break, because I know you, you got dropped off far away from the newspaper and had to hike it, uh, but uh, uh, please stand by for Aaron Dykes, who's going to be on the phone, obviously working with you and conferring with you when you're in Switzerland. Uh, he'd like to talk to you about uh, some of those interviews we're doing later uh, yeah. in the week to line those up. So I'm going to have him call you there uh, at AFP in about 10 minutes, or we could put you on hold here in a moment, and uh, my producers uh, in, in the control booth could ask you those questions. But we do want to uh, thank you for the work you've done. Folks can subscribe at AmericanFreePress.net to get hard copies, or, of course, the Internet uh, has the reports there as well at AmericanFreePress.net. And we do appreciate you uh, uh, spending time with us. And how many years has it been? Is it 35 now or 36 that you've been covering Bilderberg? 35 or 36, we go back to... Uh... About 1979 before I actually start traveling, something like that. But uh, directing the coverage by the reporters since 1975. Well, in, in closing, and then we'll let you go, uh, the folks need to talk to you. Uh, Jim, you, you brought up their concern about the collapse of the euro. Have they been too good at what they're doing? Because you know, as their own documents, World Bank, IMF show, they are getting everybody in debt, creating derivatives by design so they can take over the world. But have they gotten too good at destroying economies to consolidate them? Uh, you know, this planned destruction, command destruction, because now you talk about the, the Europe that they meant to continue to expand and merge with other unions as their UN plan states. Now it is uh, tottering and and the dollar that they control is tottering uh, and, and more and more experts are saying Europe uh, the euro may collapse uh, so so specifically any more details uh, well, the Bilderberg kids themselves the last few years have talked about how they're 
a freight to the E-Road. Of course, they want to preserve the E-Road and uh, introduce, as you pointed out, the uh, North American Union, or the American Union, and the uh, dollarization of our of the Western uh, Hemisphere. Uh, they've been grieving over their overreach on the uh, economy, which endangers the Euro, which they want to preserve. What is the prognosis from your source inside? I mean, are they thinking it's going to collapse? Are they trying to prop it up right now? Uh, they're afraid that it will collapse. They're, uh, they won't take some action to avoid it. Uh, but they're afraid of the collapse of the euro. Are simply too many countries pulling out? They Britain's never used the euro. Uh, and we have countries, as I mentioned before, like Switzerland, say they're uh, not using the euro. Uh, several other countries in Europe refuse to use the euro. Use their own. Well, uh, Switzerland. I, I'm, I'll be bringing documents to, uh, to Switzerland and uh, Sweden does not use the euro because I've got some other kind of currency in case I need it in my brief layover in uh, Sweden. So uh, and they've always refused it, and that gets Bilderberg knickers in a knot. So bottom line, uh, how's in closing, how's David Rockefeller doing? Uh, he's still quite frail in a wheelchair, 96 years old. Uh, uh, he's a... Uh, I don't think he has many Bilderberg meetings left. Well, you've got about 20 left in you. How many How many of these you got left in you, Jim? Another 15, 20? Oh, at least. All oh, right, Jim. A kid like me. We're going to go to break, and I'm going to talk to you during the break, so don't leave us. But then we're going to let you go. We're going to come back and cover other news on the other side. We'll be talking to Jim on Thursday from Switzerland when it kicks off. Jim Tucker, we'll be right back. Well, this should be very informative having Jim Tucker the elder uh, omnibudsman of exposing Bilderberg, along with the young whippersnapper uh, doing a great job, uh, Luke Radowski, uh, out there. So it's going to be very, very informative and exciting. We're going to have both of them in place from Bilderberg 2011 uh, reporting uh, for us from Switzerland. And we're going to have our great team in England and here in the U.S. conferring with them continually and getting the latest information up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com, as well as PrisonPlanet.tv. Uh, we've also got Dr. Paul Craig Roberts coming up in 30 minutes. And then we've got uh, Mike Adams, headline at Infowars.com. Forensic evidence emerges that European E. coli superbug was bioengineered to produce human fatalities. I called that last week. So we're going to be uh, breaking all of that down. We've got... Uh, Paul Craig Roberts joining us in T-minus 31 minutes. Uh, how the empire will prevail. Will Washington foment war between China and India? So all of that is coming up today. Now, that said, I have not, I mentioned it a little bit yesterday, but I want to spend some time when we come back from break here, this little short segment. Why do we do this little five-minute segment? Well, some stations don't want to carry the news. And so years ago, now 14 years ago on Genesis, 14 years ago, wow, time flies. When I got on Genesis, we decided to do this first five minutes, and a lot of the stations do carry it, but also then like to be careful when I come back at the next segment when everybody's listening, you know, to get into the most important uh, information. So uh, we're going to be getting into the 25, 63, no one's sure, uh, incredible footage of crowds of peaceful demonstrators being mowed down. And regardless of which side of the fence you're on, or even if you're neutral with this whole tribal warfare situation between the Israelis and the Palestinians, uh, these were peaceful crowds, and it, 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 it is Syrian territory that was taken. And to watch them being mowed down and then to watch our media you know, act like it's the protesters' fault while meanwhile saying we've got to invade all these countries and overthrow Egypt and overthrow Gaddafi, and it's not a ground war, but it is, because Gaddafi might have shot some protesters. It's, it's incredible. I, I mean, you know, the Chinese are bad for killing people at Tiananmen Square, but Israel's good doing this. It, 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 you can't be a sane person. I mean, if you embrace what Israel's done, you've got to embrace China running over people with tanks and shooting them in Tiananmen Square. You've got to embrace Gaddafi, what he's been accused of. 
you've got to embrace Saddam Hussein. I mean, in every society, mowing down peaceful people, I mean, they could have shot them with water cannons, they could have arrested them. But no, they just shot them. Can you imagine if the illegal aliens coming across the border, many of which have guns and are violent, were mowed down like that? What the media would do? I mean, I'm, I'm not for open borders, and I'm against, you know, the, the, the horde of illegal aliens pouring in and waving Mexican flags, but I would decry and try to go protect them if our troops were just shooting them. I mean, <laughs> including teenagers and people, just mowing them down. And I've heard our media going, good, kill them, they're Arabs. I mean, we've dehumanized these Arabs uh, in this country, and it's wrong. And, I, you know, I try to stay out of the whole Israel thing because it's a big tar baby. It's never going to stop. It just goes on and on and on. And I know that all cultures have corruption problems. You know, it's not that I'm anti-Israel or that I'm anti-Germany or anti-China or anti-Russia or anti-America. Corrupt governments run all these countries. And Israel does horrible, evil things. But I don't have, like, some, you know, hatred. It's more just scientific looking at it, and, and, and Israel's a tyranny. And Israel's involved in our internal politics, and I don't like it. Uh, and so I'm going to break it down on the other side. Just a uh, cold, hard fact straight ahead. Then we'll get into Adam Gadon, Israeli operative once our guy. I'm a follower of Thomas Jefferson. I'm a follower of George Washington. I've read their writings. I know what they stood for. And compared to other philosophers, soldiers, authors, thinkers, uh, they are heads above the rest. And I've taken a sampling of a wide spectrum of philosophy uh, from different cultures. And George Washington said we shouldn't be involved in foreign entanglements. Well, I'm an American taxpayer, and at least $3 billion a year of my money goes to Israel. Three billion goes to Egypt, billions here, billions there, and then there's all the military aid uh, on top of it. And I'm tired of it. My government isn't my government. It's run by the Bilderberg Group, 125 of the owners and CEOs and leaders of the Fortune 100. And we get their minutes, we get their documents here and there. They want tyranny, they want a police state, they want a world government. And Israel uh, is basically a Western outpost to project power into the region. You know, I don't have a fetish for bashing Israel. And I've noticed that people that go after Israel, a lot of them tend to be very vitriolic themselves and make up a lot of stuff and be very vicious uh, and not be reasonable uh, and to be part of their own hate cult. See, people are trained to think either you're for this group or you're against this group, or you're either for the Republicans or against the Republicans, or either for the Democrats or against the Democrats. No, I don't want any of it. It's all basically going in the same direction. And I think because in the last 16 years, I was somewhat ignorant about all the details of Israel 16 years ago, and I had more of a pro-Israel stance at that time just because I was brought up a conservative brought up you know mainline Christian and you're taught Israel's ganged up on they're the little guy you've got to you know support them I mean I mean that was just not even so much for my parents uh, though they were never anti-Israel but just the culture I grew up in in Dallas and you are a product of where you come from and then over the years uh, I've been attacked by people who've lied about me and done stalker stuff and made stuff up, I'd say about 99% of it's false, you know, claiming I work for Israel and things like that. And those people, a lot of them I think are government operatives, and it's been proven a lot of them are, like Hal Turner and others, but others are just mentally ill. And they're so mentally ill that when I say that, they put out articles saying Alex Jones says, if you don't worship Israel, you're mentally ill. No, I said, if you say, I work for Israel, that you are mentally ill. They go, see, he said you're mentally ill if you don't worship Israel. That's not what I said. So the system almost tries to force you into a position. You either strap on a Nazi armband, wear a Palestinian headdress, or you join Israel. And see, I don't want to join Israel. And I don't want to join uh, the uh, 
groups that literally say if you fall on a banana peel that Israel did it. I mean, there are folks out there saying that Israel blew up Fukushima. Uh, or when there's an earthquake, Israel did it. I mean, you know, uh, my issue is governments are corrupt. China's corrupt. The U.S. government, the German government, the Russian government. That's the nature. That's history. That's what the founders taught. It's what philosophy shows. It's what Plato wrote about. The Greeks were corrupt. So were their enemies, the Persians. I'm not for the Persians. I'm not for the Greeks. I understand human nature. And so people want to make things so simplistic. But looking at Israel, studying what Israel does, because Israel's been given so much unconditional support, it's like a, uh, you know, a teenager who you let do whatever they want. Here, have the house, have the car, have all the money, do whatever you want. I mean, the, you know, those kids generally are going to go to hell in a handbasket. So, so looking at Israel from that perspective, Israel has been given such a long leash that Israel does whatever it wants, whenever it wants. And more and more, I get angry at Israel because... I want to be left alone. I want to be an American. I want my sovereignty. And I see the Israeli lobby in this country always at the forefront of trying to push open borders and, and globalism. Always at the forefront of the ADL and others demonizing anybody that doesn't want the banks to take over, called banker bailout. Uh, I see the Israeli lobby. and I mean, they have meetings here in Austin every month, the ADL pushing to restrict the Second Amendment. And, and, and the ADL admittedly is basically Israeli intelligence. Look, I don't like Russian spies in America. I don't like British spies in America. I don't like Israeli spies in America. But let me tell you, the Russians and the British and others can't get away with stuff like this. My grandfathers, both of them, you know, signed up for World War II. My dad's dad flew B-17s over Europe and barely survived. Never even talked about it until after he was dead and we got it all out of his trunk. All, all the medals and the rest of it. And, and, and then this guilt for, what, for Nazi Germany has somehow been placed on America where if you don't do whatever Israel says or does, you committed the Holocaust. If you're for the Second Amendment or you want to abolish the Federal Reserve, you hate Jews. Well, and, and, and it's always injected in there. I just want my freedom. I just want my Second Amendment. And you look at the Israeli lobby, Chucky e. Schumer and... and and Rahm Emanuel, whose daddy was, you know, ear gun, and, 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 and he's part of the Israeli Defense Forces. Here in America, coming and, and saying they want to take my guns away and have a no-gun buy list if they put me on a list. That, that, that Israel is advising TSA on how to set up domestic checkpoints and police departments. It's all over the news. I mean, get out of my life. Get, get off my back. Stop pushing. Stop doing what you're doing. And, and, and then it's shameful to, to see this footage, and we'll play some of it for PrisonPlanet.tv viewers in the background while I'm talking about it, of hundreds of peaceful protesters with their Syrian flags on what was Syria being mowed down, being shot. And they're being killed. And it's, it's happening in front of everyone. And as I said on PrisonPlanet.tv in the background, we'll, we'll roll some of that video, not the audio. But I don't like the communist Chinese leadership. And I remember back under Clinton, if you criticize the communist Chinese and their spies in our government and the missile secrets, CNN would say people don't like what China's doing because they're anti-Asian. Oh, you don't like Obama's health care. You're anti-health care. Or you're anti-black. What does that have to do with it? It's dishonest. It's a label. So I don't like Tiananmen Square and tanks running over people and people being shot. I don't like watching the Mexican government a few years ago shoot peaceful protesters, and I got angry about it. Not because I hate Mexicans, because I hate their government. And it's the same thing with Israel. I don't have some beef with Jewish people. I know Jewish people are diverse. I don't like the Nazis and people you know, that say Jews are inherently evil, or groups that say, uh, black groups that say whites are inherently evil. But at the same time, then, by setting Israel up 
as infallible and can do no wrong, we allow Israel to engage in espionage inside the United States, to manipulate our politics, and to now get to the point of peaceful protesters coming across and not water canning them, not arresting them, but shooting them, killing upwards of 63 and injuring hundreds. And even as they left, Israel continued to shoot them. Uh, it's being reported. I mean, this is Tiananmen Square. This is, you know, Israel said they didn't shoot people when they came down on board the flotilla. But the evidence showed they did. Well, what do you think is going on right here? I mean, this is in plain, broad daylight. People say, well, it's an Assyrian stunt. Whatever, it used to be Syrian land. Those people have a lot of courage to march up unarmed and then to be shot. I want the Syrians to live in peace. I want the Israelis to live in peace. But it's a political football of tribal warfare that is a big money sink that is never going to go away. The Israelis aren't going to go anywhere. They got 400 nukes. The Arabs aren't going to go anywhere. And this whole thing is going like a freight train towards World War III, and I don't want World War III. Also, the West is involved in the Arab Spring, overthrowing. Think about this. Over throwing a 31-year dictator who tortured people for Israel and the U.S., who did anything he was told, Hosey Mubarak, and then they say, oh my gosh, they shot at some protesters, step down, Mubarak, you shot and, and killed two protesters. That was the first event. Two people. Israel shoots and kills 63, and we're told, this is wonderful, the protesters asked for it, State Department says protesters show restraint. Headlines, violence on the border, not massacre. Oh, there's violence. It's, it's the Syrians' fault. I can't live lies. I can't see the Israeli lobby teamed up with the British, European lobby in the U.S. pushing for this war in Libya that they said wasn't a war and isn't a ground war and that would last two days, not three months. Now they're saying it's going to go into next year. Lies, lies, lies. I can't watch Israel sit there and mow down hundreds of people, killing 63 of them in cold blood, and then see Husni Mubarak, their own minion who they betrayed. That's what I mean. There's no honor here, even with their own dictators. And then they tell you, oh, we got to go into Libya because he may have shot some protesters, and it turns out that's not even true. And he had rape gangs with Viagra. That wasn't true. That he went to Venezuela. That wasn't true. It's just... Total 1984, up is down, down is up, black is white, ministry of truth. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I'm going to come back, finish up with this, get into Adam Gadon, the anti-gun lobby, using Al-Qaeda to go the point I'm trying to get at dealing with Israel. We are tribal creatures. Because if you go back thousands of years ago, your tribe did stand for you and you had to protect yourselves or the other tribe would come and take your land kill your men and take your women and children as slaves if they wanted them. That's been the universal rule of human society. We just do it on more of a modern format today. And so my issue is, I don't apologize for criticizing Israel. I try to clarify. Because if you just hate Israel, that then feeds into this global balkanization and division and dehumanizes the people in Israel, just like our media seeks to dehumanize the Palestinians. Okay? And so what I'm getting at here is that I don't like any of these governments. They're all corrupt. They're all evil. They're all grabbing for whatever power they can get. You understand that? It's Israel's corrupt. The U.S. government's corrupt. They're all corrupt. They're all lying. They all have powerful financial interests who are completely ruthless and competing with each other to set up a world government and to decide who's going to run that world government. But as a moral person, when you see an outrage like this, you must speak out against it. When you see these people being mowed down. And this will only inflame more tensions. This will only, I mean, Israel's not stupid. They gave those soldiers those orders. That's admitted to mow those people down. 
Uh, it's just like the Jefferson Memorial with the police sl body slamming and choking people for silently dancing. That made 20 times more people show up this weekend. Now those park police that body slammed them may lose their job, the Washington Post is reporting. See, so why would Israel mow down peaceful people, civilians? Why would they do something that they know will turn world attention against Israel? Well, if you look, the Israeli lobby is lockstep uh, with uh, MI6, European intelligence, and U.S. intelligence fomenting rebellions all over the Middle East. Because the globalists want a powder keg in the Middle East. You heard Jim Tucker from his Bilderberg source. He doesn't know why. The source didn't tell him why they want the Middle East to blow up. I'll tell you why. Because they want to start what could lead to, to a giant regional conflict engulfing Pakistan, India, and China. They've caught CIA people trying to sell and give uranium to Al-Qaeda, groups they control, to then blame it on Pakistan to invade that country. The bankers have created a global meltdown. They need a new giant diversion, a new war, so big, as Rand Corporation said two years ago, and Paul Watson wrote about it, so big that everybody forgets about losing their house. People forget about the gas prices. People forget about the imploding economy. And they rally around primitively around the government, and then they can get through their carbon tax. They can get through their TSA on the streets. They can get through this entire system. And so I have to look out for my interest as an American. And the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, protects me as a hedge against tyranny. When you get rid of those checks and balances on government and corporations in every case in history you get overrun and enslaved and those checks and balances are being removed right now and we've got uh, reuters uh, articles uh, here where the world bank openly calls for a global tax to be paid to them on all carbon activities World Bank to suggest CO2 levy on jet shipping fuel. Then it goes on. You can read the full New World Bank report. They've been putting out similar reports for more than 20 years, calling for total control paid to the private banks, the ones doing all of this. And I don't care if you're German, Jewish, Chinese, Mexican. You better get it through your head. 99.9% .9 of us are going to be hurt by this. The globalists are waging war against the real free market, against prosperity. They openly say in every one of their major reports they want a post-industrial world. They already own the world through fraud. They don't want you to be able to compete. That's what the government health care is about. That's what the carbon tax is about. Giving waivers to insiders. Letting insiders build, build coal plants, you can't. Letting insiders drill for oil, but you can't. It's a managed economy going back to royalty where you had to get a letter a, a, a license, an authorization. And, and by the way, first they give you licenses and give them to everybody. Then over time in every culture, they phase out the licenses, like in New York, where they started licensing, what, 50 plus years ago for guns? Everybody got one for a few bucks. Then they stopped giving the licenses, unless you paid off the politicians 30 grand, unless you jumped through the hoops. So all the mobsters can pay off the cops. They got guns, but you don't. And it's the same thing. It's a global licensure. Now, when we come back, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts is coming up then, because now I'm gotten behind. We'll get into Adam Gadon and the fact that they say Al-Qaeda is going to start shooting people everywhere, so the government needs to go ahead and take your guns. This coinciding with Obama getting ready to announce his new gun control measure. Al-Qaeda comes in to agree with him in hell. Well, Dr. Webster Griffin Tarpley... General Hamid Ghul, former head of Pakistani intelligence, and countless others have broken down the geopolitical facts. There's an attempt to claim that the Pakistani government is working with Al-Qaeda. CIA officer was try trying to give them chemical, biological, radiological weapons over a month ago. That there's a move uh, to try to destabilize that region and basically start World War III. The Rand Corporation, close to three years ago, two and a half years ago, called for something even bigger than the Iran or Iraq war or the Afghan situation, something bigger than just a single war, uh, to be able to smokescreen uh, the global banking implosion that the IMF and World Bank openly uh, hope to transform into this new bank of the world. 
You got the euro plunging. All this is happening. That's when governments start wars. Well, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, the former uh, number two man, head of policy at the Department of Treasury, has got a new report out today. How the empire will prevail. Will Washington foment war between China and India? We'll be talking to him in one moment. Uh, up on DrudgeReport.com, on the right-hand column, prominent Swiss politician calls for arrest of Kissinger at Bilderberg Summit. And that's the great reportage of Paul Joseph Watson at PrisonPlanet.com. And we are going to be covering Bilderberg throughout uh, this week. And you also heard Jim Tucker earlier from his Bilderberg source. Bilderbergs are desperately struggling. Uh, B Bilderberg group meeting to try to save the euro. And I know Watson's going to do another blurb on that. Very newsworthy uh, information as some of the top, most wealthy people in the world. Into the geopolitical move to get a war started in Central and Southern Asia and the subcontinent. Uh, I want to get in with Dr. Roberts, Israel mowing down and killing reportedly 63 people and, and American TV's like, good, they deserve it. But then we've got to attack Gaddafi because he might have killed a couple people and we got to overthrow Mubarak because he might have killed a couple. I, I mean, look, 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 if you worship Israel, whatever, I, I've never, I've tried to stay out of this, this, this tar baby because I just want my Bill of Rights, my Constitution, my Second Amendment, my property rights. But give me a break, folks. I mean, I mean, Israel, all right, kill them Arabs, blow them away. They're peaceful. Shoot them, kill them. Shoot them when they run. Man, that's manly. They're unarmed, trying to get their own property back, southern Syria. But then, well, let's go to Dr. Roberts. We'll get his take on that as well. But we got to get that Gaddafi. He might have shot somebody. It isn't a ground war. They're just troops on the ground. I mean, we're entering 1984. Dr. Roberts, great to have you here with us today, sir, via video Skype. Thanks, Alex. Well, you just heard me ranting there. I mean, I feel like I've woken up in 1984 squared, but your big article today, it's up on Prison Planet, InfoWars, and other great sites everywhere. Uh, what's your take on the attempt to start World War III? <laughs> well, Alex, my column that's up today is, is speculative. Uh, I did it to get people thinking and watching the situation because uh, the real unresolved uh, problem for Washington is China. Uh, they don't really know what to do about China because it has arisen very fast uh, economically and uh, it's uh, also rising fast militarily, but it also has uh, the diplomatic uh, advantage over the United States. It, it doesn't threaten people and bully them it offers them uh, cooperation, economic uh, development. And soft so power. It's a soft power that we uh, used to emphasize before the brown-shirted uh, neoconservatives uh, took over uh, Washington. So the question is, uh, what uh, will Washington do about China? Um, the uh, anxiety has worsened since... Uh, Strauss Kahn, uh, the former director of the IMF, issued the report recently that within five years, uh, China would be the number one economic power uh, in the world. And five years is not very long to <laughs> plan for, for what to do about a rising power. And so um, <clears throat> I noticed uh, certain things have been happening. Uh, one, we've been farming all over India uh, we now, we've had massive uh, arms sales to them. We have these military cooperation agreements and, uh, and uh, joint military exercises. And you have to wonder uh, about that. You know, why, why is India related to America's uh, um, strategic military interest? Uh, and we've seen uh, recently, uh, because of the uh, alleged uh, commando raid that killed bin Laden, that the United States has been increasing its pressure on Pakistan, uh, threatening it, and uh, we've seen the various reports that uh, American military leaders believe we cannot prevail in uh, Afghanistan unless we widen the war into Pakistan because the Taliban have sanctuaries there and so on and so on. And lo and behold, what happened? The Pakistanis got the message and they ran off to China. And the Pakistani prime minister said that China was their best and most trusted friend. 
And the Chinese, according to the Indian press, it's all over the Indian press, uh, uh, called Washington and told Washington to leave Pakistan alone, to respect its sovereignty, and that China would regard any U.S. military attack on Pakistan as an attack on China. Well, that is an amazing uh, kind of ultimatum, not the kind we haven't seen since uh, World War I or World War II. And it shows a commitment of China to Pakistan. Well, this has to really upset the, the Indians to find that uh, Pakistan, that they have differences with, is now under the protection of China. And so I would expect that uh, the Washington now sees a way to deal with China, and that's to involve it in a war with India. And since they're both uh, nuclear powers, uh, there's a good chance that it would, it would go nuclear. So most likely what Washington would do in this type of situation is to remove itself from contention with Pakistan and China and substitute India. <laughs> and we, uh, Washington seems to be very good at getting other people to do its dirty work. You know, witness uh, Britain and France uh, today in Libya. Yeah, surrogates, kamikaze states. That's right, and NATO and Afghanistan. And so uh, the, the ability uh, of the Americans to uh, uh, purchase uh, leaders and other governments, uh, to manipulate them, to lead them into doing uh, America's uh, Washington's, I don't want to say America's, Washington's will, is, is proven. And so I just uh, drew a speculative conclusion. I don't know that this would happen. But, well, uh, sir, it's very clear the decision was made um, really in the last 10, 15 years consciously to shift from a free society to an authoritarian one. So these global interests that use America as its uh, juggernaut are domestically clamping down uh, uh, as well. And I think the point you made that it's Washington, not America. America is drug kicking and screaming uh, the adult sitcom watching Prozac public, but also uh, the 30, 40, 50 million conservatively that really are awake, that are libertarian, that are constitutionalist. Uh, the anti-war movement's been publicly taken over by the Ford Foundation. We are a captured state. And looking at that, that's why uh, the U.S. Uh, controllers are so arrogant is we have the nuclear weapons, Israel has the nukes, uh, Europe has nukes, uh, England has nukes, but they are emboldened by feeding on defenseless third world states, kind of like uh, uh, Hitler attacking the old world Poland with their horse-drawn artillery. It was a joke, uh, but at, the, at a certain point they do run into China. They do run into Russia, who I'm not saying are great guys, and I've got a you know l love affair with them. But you can't say China's bad mowing down people at Tiananmen Square if Israel's good mowing them down. I mean, uh, you, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm just coldly, as a political atheist, looking you know at the uh, lay of the land, uh, or political realist is, is a better term, and. Uh, it's clear in every case in history, when the West begins to collapse, it starts a giant war, normally with itself. And uh, you, you say you're speculating, uh, Dr. Tarpley, General Hamid Ghul, countless others who I really respect in my own analysis. I mean, they're clearly in there and they're selling the PR and the whole bin Laden fable to uh, attack Pakistan. Uh, so it's, I guess, in a pincer with India and Kashmir and the, and the, and the U.S. through... Uh, Afghanistan and, and then out of the Gulf into there. I mean, any way you slice it, uh, we know the West is fomenting many of these rebellions that were already ready to go, but they triggered it in the Middle East. Uh, it's on. I mean, I, I th clearly they're moving in to a very dangerous uh, phase of geopolitical destabilization, uh, I guess, as a political smokescreen for the collapsing economies. Well, it it could be, but that uh, assumes that they know that they're collapsing. And uh, <laughs> that's not clear that they know that. Uh, or it could, it could be a combination of things. Uh, I think probably one of the most important is, the, uh, is Washington's drive for hegemony uh, over the world and the, and the neoconservative drive for uh, American hegemony. 
you know, it's, it's like we said some years ago when this first appeared, the, uh, the neoconservatives are the new uh, Jacobins. You know, the Jacobins of the French Revolution that wanted to spread the French Revolution to all of Europe. And so we had all the decades of the Napoleonic Wars and so on. So I, there are many reasons, and they all could come together to support uh, war. But I, th I think you're correct that uh, war is uh, on the agenda, and it's where things are headed. In fact, it, it may be so much on the agenda that's out of control and, and may be almost impossible, even uh, if Washington wanted to, to, to pull back on it. You see, the whole Libyan thing is about uh, ejecting China from its oil investments in eastern Libya. The Syrian thing is about ejecting Russia from its uh, Syrian naval base. Well, so it's gone already from beating up on Iraq and, and Yemen and, and, uh, and Pakistan to confrontations, even if indirect, under the cover of the Arab Spring, but they are, they are confrontations between Washington and China and Washington and Russia, and they affect both China and Russia's strategic interests. Sir, you just hit on something, obviously being a big history buff, because those that know history are not doomed to repeat it. If you look at Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart and his magic flute, that really made folks mad. He uh, died pretty quick thereafter. But if you read about the Jacobins, they wanted, what, a nine-day work week? They wanted to change uh, and, and, and get rid of the family. They wanted to abolish technology. Uh, they wanted to, to be, be God. And, if, and that was the Illuminati, uh, who, who was the precursor of that, 1776, Ingolstadt University. And, and, and you tell the general public this, they just don't understand it. But you look at the communists that then came out of that. There's a direct historical mainline uh, connection to that. You see the Trotskyites founding the neocons after Trotsky was run into Mexico and then killed. And, 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 and then uh, the, the, you know, the founder of the neocons uh, you know, being the, you know, the uh, deputy Trotskyite. And uh, then you've got all those guys entering the White House. Uh, that's why they want to read. And you've got uh, Genrich writing books about ending American sovereignty and writing the intro to Al Alvin and Heidi Toffler's, you know, world government book. Uh, so you just brought that up. I mean, they want order out of chaos, as, as Bush said. And that's their stratagem. And, is com and really what it is is nothing but a light nomenclature to encapsulate their insanity. These people are the great-great-great-grandchildren of the Illuminati. And you just said it. Well, they've got more, they've got more chaos than order. Yeah. <laughs> but you just said it. They are the Illuminati. Well, <clears throat> I don't know how they think of themselves, and the parallel you draw may be accurate. But uh, the issues before us are, are, uh, are not historical. They're the present day and, and the future. And the question is, uh, how do you pull back from these confrontations? We want China out of Africa because it has oil investments in three countries, um, Angola, Nigeria, and Libya. And so we want them out because it's a way of hurting their economy uh, by making their oil supplies less certain. Of course, they can buy oil in the markets as long as it's available to them. But uh, the backup investments they had were uh, was uh, like insurance. And so we're depriving them of the insurance. That'll make them a bit more nervous. They won't like it. Uh, uh, their hostility toward the United States will rise. And the same with Russia. We have Russia ring with military bases, and now it has a naval base in the Mediterranean that Washington thinks of as its sea. And Washington doesn't want Russia to have a, a, uh, a naval base there. And so the turmoil has been stirred up in Syria. And I'm sure a lot of that turmoil is uh, indigenous and, and right, but uh, there's, there's the CIA's hand there. The reports are clear that we've been supporting uh, opposition groups there with money and apparently now with weapons. Stay there, Dr. Roberts. I want to get your take on where you see this going, on the massacre uh, that our media is applauding 
uh, against the Syrians. How can they attack Gaddafi, claiming he did something like this with no proof, but then praise open mass murder in front of every one of the peaceful protesters? This is the opposite of all Craig Roberts. Coming up at the bottom of the next hour, we have Mike Adams. Food wars, how European health authorities are using the E. coli scare to wage economic warfare against vegetable farmers. Big Agra always uses this stuff when generally they're the cause to then go after the small producers. The same thing's happening in Europe and evidence shows it's genetically engineered. That is coming up. A lot of other important news. Uh, Dr. Roberts, we've only got about four minutes left with you. Uh, what's your view of Israel mowing down, uh, reportedly killing MSNBC says, 63 peaceful people walking onto Syrian land they were behind barbed wire. They could have just arrested him. Uh, instead, just shoot him in front of the, the Israelis actually released footage of it. But then we've got to invade Libya because he might have shot a couple of protesters. And so we've got to have a new war. Uh, but it's not a ground war, but it is. I mean, this hypocrisy has reached new heights. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, but you see, um, the Palestinians are demonized, aren't they? They're all terrorists. They all run around with uh, bombs on their bodies. And uh, so no one cares uh, what happens to the Palestinians. They're demonized, like uh, like the Senator Edwards is now <laughs> being prosecuted for a non-crime by the Department of Justice. And of course, as we've already discussed Libya, uh, the whole reason is to uh, check China. It has nothing to do with uh, any uh, thing that Gaddafi did except let China in to Libyan oil investments. So you you do a very good job, Alex, uh, on your show of making it clear that literally everything that is told to us by the media is a lie, serving some more powerful interest. And so that's just uh, what we see, everything, and you expose it over and over, uh, such as uh, this uh, um, problem with <laughs> alleged problem with German vegetables. It's everything is a lie to serve a powerful interest. And so uh, Gaddafi, we've never heard a word about him being oppressive or anything of the sort. And all of a sudden we have to get him out because he's oppressive. Well, we're getting him out because of China's oil investments. In closing, Standard & Poor's a few months ago said we may lose the credit rating, and then that would make the deficit exponentially larger. And, and now uh, Moody's is coming out saying something similar. Uh, are no. things accelerating no. towards a head? No. no, what they're saying, they're, they're giving the Republicans pressure to put on Obama to cut Medicare and Social Security. That's what that's about. Do you really think Moody's could get away with reducing uh, the U.S. credit rating? They would be arrested. They would be waterboarded. They would be uh, quill. They would be said to be terrorists, hurting uh, the war on terror, trying to bring America down. There's no chance of any of these punk rating agencies. They all answer to Wall Street. Wall Street's their paymaster. Well, I totally agree. It's it's right when they want to pass new gun control. Adam Gadon comes out and says Al Qaeda wants to buy guns at gun shows. Right when they're trying to do the austerity to give the bankers more of our money. Uh, they uh, uh, they have their rating aid, just like Paulson terrorized people in October of 2008, saying, give us money or we'll plunge the economy. Right. So, no, they're not going to downgrade. It's all propaganda to help the Republicans cut Social Security and Medicare. That's what it's all about. And Wall Street wants those cut because it wants them privatized, because it can make more hundreds of billions of dollars. If they can privatize Social Security, they can privatize Medicare. That's money for Wall Street. And so that's what it's about. It's, uh, <laughs> All right. His book is available in bookstores everywhere and at Amazon. How the Economy Was Lost, The War of the Worlds. We have that link to the bottom of his latest article. How the Empire Will Prevail, Will Washington Foment War Between China and India. Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, former editor of the Wall Street Journal, former head of policy department of Treasury. Thank you so much for spending time with us, Doc. George being with you, Alex. Well, DrudgeReport.com. I tell you, Drudge has a lot of courage. He also knows where the people's minds are. That's why he's the number one news outfit online in the world, dwarfing everything else, major studies. Even the New York Times has had to admit 
show that he's the number one news driver out there. Well, uh, you guys are losing uh, subscribers, or losing readers, losing viewers. I'm not probably the best radio host in the world. I mean, I've got historical knowledge. I can be entertaining. Uh, and I'm, I'm okay, but um, why do I have 24 million? In fact, will you print me again or get the IT guy to print me the uh, Shoutcast statistics? You can go to shoutcast.com and click on statistics, and it's uh, 24 million people. 24 million, 700 and something thousand. I'll, I'll print up the actual numbers here in a minute. You can go to shoutcast.com and... You know, we're number one there, and you can click on statistics. We've been number one for four or five years in talk radio uh, for Internet streaming. Uh, but now we're number one, period, against 24-hour Chinese music stations, German, uh, U.S., uh, uh, 24 million, almost 25 million people tuned in just over that platform. That's only one way we stream. Then we've got the free podcast. You just go to the Listen uh, tab at InfoWars.com uh, to get that. We're about to update it. It's like four or five years old. It's the old-fashioned where you copy the text and put it in your computer. We're going to try to get a WordPress feed to make it a little bit more high-tech. We tend to set things up and move forward. And we've got a lot of other ways we're streamed. A lot of radio stations stream the show. Genesis, GCN Live streams the show. That's not counting all the other ways we stream. One way we stream, 24 million and memory serves 700,000. In fact, I can even go to Shoutcast right here. Shoutcast.com. Hit enter. And uh, it will uh, take me there. Now I'm on Shoutcast. I got a bunch of news coming up after the break, but I'll get to that in a minute. Um, and I go there. And then I'm looking for the statistics. Top 10 list. Mail. AOL owns this. Well, there's Alex Jones at the top, just one of our streams live right now. There's a whole bunch of them in there, 15,143. But if you add them all together, listening at any one time, it's more than 30,000. Let's, uh, I'm trying to find the statistics tab. I'll find the IT guy during the break and find it because it used to be right up there at the top. Um, let me see, broadcasting tools, partners, blog, radio players. I don't know. I'll have to find that during the break. I thought it was there a lot easier to find. Uh, point is, it's 24 million and change. And uh, I sent that over to Watson last night, but he's been so busy writing other articles, he didn't do a blurb on it. But the illustration here is that people are hungry for the truth. And how did I get into this discussion? Oh, yeah, the Drudge Report. There's a reason the Drudge Report for now more than 15 years has been number one and is getting even bigger. The reason it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger is because Drudge knows what you want to see. The full spectrum of news. Uh, what is interesting. Uh, what is hidden. And more and more, uh, Drudge is carrying PrisonPlanet.com and InfoWars.com uh, articles. And that just shows that this information, this idea of liberty and freedom and understanding the real geopolitical systems is an idea whose time has come. And that we've got a fighting chance against this globalist system if we now use the massive base of people we have that are awake, if they reach out and wake up others, and then they reach out and wake up others, and if they reach out uh, and wake up others. But in a month, the month of May, the numbers just came out, 24 million plus. I actually had the printout last night, uh, and I'll find that during the break. But then I've got all the other news, the whole Adam Gadon situation. I mean, hidden in plain view. Adam Gadon, Adam Perlman, incredible news. I said that's where I thought it would be going last Friday. Food wars, how European health authorities are using E. coli scare to wage economic warfare against vegetable farmers. Coming up at the bottom of the hour, the head of Natural News, Mike Adams, joins us. Forensic evidence emerges that European E. coli superbug was bioengineered to produce human fatalities. And they've got all the documentation on that and we're going to break down similar food scares that were done here to try to pass the food safety act written by big agra openly to shut down small farms and ranches who in almost every case are not involved in the food chain breakdown it's big agra that's doing it
and we're going to talk about some of the things that have caused mutations in the past. They spray a liquid vaccine on the food crops. And you can just type in six years ago, it'll come up. In fact, we'll do it right now, or, or we'll do it after I cover some other news. FDA approves virus spray for meat. And it goes in and, 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 and the viruses then inject into the E. coli and kill them. But it's a, it's a live vaccine, and so it's had big mutation problems. Well, they don't care. I mean, if it kills you, it doesn't matter, because they'll just use that to pass laws to shut down local Amish that have nothing to do with it. Or make you get a $10 tag for a $5 chicken, but then Tyson's exempt. You got 20 chickens, here's your tag. Tyson and other big companies causing the problems, they're exempt. They wrote the law, just like McDonald's is exempt from having to get health insurance, along with 2,000-plus other companies that give to Obama. Just like General Electric's exempt from having to uh, clean up their coal plants and they can build new ones, but every other major company can. That's how the global mafia operates. By the way, I found that if you go to shoutcast.com, uh, where we're number one, not just for talk radio, but number one, period. If you go there, 24,753,204, or almost 25 million, number one, above music, talk, and that's only one way we stream, one format. One format. We have eight different YouTube channels. One of them has 114 million views and is exponentially growing. Again, that's the power of the truth. The Obama deception, see more than 30 million times on Google and YouTube alone. One version, 9 million views. That's the power of the alternative media. That's the power of you. Blocking the troll attacks against Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Blocking the troll attacks, dealing, exposing them with the truth uh, on, on our YouTube channels. Dealing with all their COINTELPRO. We are winning. And the ideas and understanding is spreading. They can't just whack Alex Jones because there's so many countless other people becoming more and more prominent telling the truth. Liberty is rising. It's so exciting. So you just go to shoutcast.com, click on help, and then the first link is stats. You can see that. Number one. Number one, ladies and gentlemen, number one in more and more avenues, more and more places. So many shows say we're number one. <laughs> but I've never really sat here and explained we've been number one for a long time and becoming even more number one. Uh, of course, and then again, DrudgeReport.com is number one, period, for news sites in the world. That's number one up there. So uh, very exciting. And other media just can't tell the truth, can't talk about real issues, and that's why no one reads you, no one listens to you, no one talks about you. Oh, a lot of it's hidden in plain view. It's in Reuters AP that world government's being set up by private banks, but it's a little footnote and no talk show hosts cover it. CNN doesn't cover it. Oh, but Drudge links to it. Reuters yesterday, World Bank wants global CO2 taxes on human activity. He did. We did. Oh, it's there. So, so what do these companies and government want? They want to stop the aggregator sites, the sites that take a collection of news, link to it, and point it out. But see, we don't even need to do that. We could sit here with the articles and cover and, 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 and have commentary on them. It's the analysis people want. And the truth is, once you figure out how the world really works, things stop not making sense and now make perfect sense. Once you start reading UN documents, World Bank documents, their whole blueprint's right there. You don't even have to know. They've been so arrogant and think you're not reading what they're saying. They're out in the open. People say, Alex, how do you predict this? How do you predict that? How did you know this was going to happen? How did you know they're going to say that Al-Qaeda is going to start attacking shopping malls? Because I had police tell me and got documents years ago that they're hyping this fear up and saying it's not a question of it, but when, so they can roll TSA out on the streets and clamp down and have martial law in America. All this has been martial law training. Now, let me get to the next news. Let's just play a clip here uh, from national TV uh, uh, hyping up the fear and uh, hyping up that, oh, my gosh, we don't have enough gun laws. Al-Qaeda is going to get us. And Adam Gadon. Adam Perlman, the grandson of the former head of the ADL, who got arrested beating up Muslims, he hated them so much in Southern California, he magically uploaded in the same Intel Center video layer as the Al-Qaeda logo. Wired Magazine three years ago. This guy comes out right as Obama gets ready, and, 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 and uh, Kurt Nimmo's article writes about this today, right as they're about to launch this month their new gun control initiative, he comes out and says, guns are so easy to get in America. Let's exploit the fact that they have gun shows. You can buy guns, private seller. 
You can sell your neighbor a gun, you can go to a gun show and sell one. But you can't if you're a federal firearms dealer and officially one. They want to register all guns. They want to ban all semi-auto. So he comes out and says, oh, the dumb Americans, they have guns. I mean, the ADL's always been anti-gun. Now, now here's this, this minion. And again, use your common sense. Can a passport fly out of the exploded plane, not be damaged, and be found on 9-11 of the chief hijacker? Government says that happened. Does Al-Qaeda, if it's real, this anti-Israel, anti-Semitic, hate-filled group, which was admittedly set up by the CIA, that's on record, magically, the head, they're now saying he may be in the top five, may be number one, he's in the top five, four of the top five from America. And we're all a locky hanging out the Pentagon. Don't forget all that. The head of Al-Qaeda is a fat Jewish kid from California whose videos get uploaded in a Pentagon front group website in the same video logo. The Al-Qaeda logo is in the same as the Intel Center logo. Now, if you believe that, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, ladies and gentlemen, I could grow a big beard and put a turban on and upload videos and say, you Americans, I'm going to get you. You know, we got, you got guns over there, so we're going to get them and kill you. Right as the gun. Look, Obama got caught. We told you this six years ago. We told you this a year and a half ago that the Justice Department was going to use American guns in Mexico to get our guns. Now you hear them, press conferences, we've got to ban semi-auto and, and ban multiple sale and shut down gun shows because the, the, the stuff in Mexico is happening because of American guns. Turns out that isn't true. Most of them are sold by the military. They're fully auto, grenade launchers, hand grenades. But it turns out over 10,000 guns, ATF agents nationwide, are ordered to let them be shipped into Mexico and to help so they can trace them back. That's a false flag right there. So you got to decide. Do you love the fetish of fearing Muslims all day and these fake, uh, look, look. You want AP? You want UPI? Type in Israel founded Hamas, AP, UPI. I'm not saying there aren't real people that attack Israel. The point is, Israel has fake groups. I, I showed you yesterday, WikiLeaks 2008 released, and the Army admitted it. Army document, how to stage false flag attacks. The Army teaches its captains in special ops how to stage attacks. Okay, I mean, th there's Army manuals. Grow up, wake up. This is real. Adam Gadon, Adam Gadon called for gun violence, merges with Obama under the radar. Remember, I told you that when they try to pass the Cybersecurity Act, there'd be a big hack attack? It happened. Now China's saying the U.S. is doing it to itself, ABC News, to pass the cybersecurity takeover. Right as they want to raise the debt ceiling, they start threatening to implode the economy just like in 2008. The banks do. Right as they roll out the new anti-gun control legislation, Al-Qaeda pops up and says, yes, because your gun laws are lax, we're going to attack your shopping malls. And, they, and the globalists may do it. And that's how they're going to roll TSA out nationwide. Folks, this is how the globalists take over. They stage the events. That's how tyranny wins. Here is the Adam Gadon clip. Listen to this. Place ...to play an important and decisive part in the jihad against the Zionists and Crusaders. Is this the new face of Al-Qaeda? A threatening new video surfacing on the web the from Adam Gadan, the so-called American Taliban? In it, a chilling call to arms for would-be terrorists. He urges Al-Qaeda sympathizers already in the U.S. to exploit weaknesses in U.S. gun laws oh. and background checks to get weapons and go on a rampage. Oh. America is absolutely awash with easily obtainable firearms. You can go down to a gun show at the local convention center and come away with a fully automatic assault rifle without a background check and most likely without having to show an identification card. He's encouraging lone wolf attacks similar to but less sophisticated than That's convicted enough. terrorist Faisal Shahzad. Yeah, and, and then they go over the fact that uh, the people that have struck the U.S. who were admittedly under U.S. government control and patsies and allowed to do it and commanded by people they thought were Al-Qaeda but were FBI. Ladies and gentlemen, that is directly Violence Policy Center, Brady Center, ADL's anti-gun. I mean, they call you anti-Semitic if you're pro-gun. I mean, I mean th these people are nuts. Openly, you've got the Jewish head of Al-Qaeda. I mean, it doesn't get any more ridiculous than this. In our face, with pure anti-gun lobby, you can buy fully automatic. He even puts on the fake foreign accent. I mean, it's ridiculous. 
get down to the gun shows and they're like everybody's like we better pass laws right as obama and it was announced weeks ago in the month of june will announce he wants to ban the gun show loophole that's private sale selling your neighbor a gun giving your grandson a gun giving your son a gun your wife a gun your wife giving your husband a gun i buy my wife guns she bought me guns Oh my gosh, ban that, ban semi-auto total. And there he is lying saying you can buy full auto to scare people. Direct White House propaganda out of Al-Qaeda. What is it going to take for you to wake up? You know how they're going to put TSA on the streets that they've been beta testing and getting ready for? I told you for years, shootings at shopping malls claiming American Taliban Al-Qaeda. And in these reports they put out, they claim the militias. The militias secretly work for Al-Qaeda. Folks, the militias after 9-11 got mad at me because they are, were so patriotic, they bought the propaganda that this was all real and, and were selling uh, Muslim hunting licenses on their websites. The, the good old boys with Johnny Reb flags hanging up in their basements are working for Al-Qaeda. <laughs> I mean, there's only, there's only one. <laughs> oh, but yeah, the American Taliban, the white Al-Qaeda led by the Jewish guy is going to attack us. I mean, does anybody buy this? All right on time. All right, I'm going to talk more towards the end of the hour after Adams joins us about this whole situation that Al-Qaeda is set to strike. They're going to shoot and kill everybody any minute. Give your guns up. And they'll go stage a few CIA-run Mumbai attacks, and that's even come out in Chicago Tribune that... Uh, reportedly a top CIA guy ran that. That's what the Indians said at the time. And they will come for your guns. And good old boys will say, I guess I'm going to turn mine in or register it. I'm not with Al-Qaeda. I mean, it's ridiculous. And that's how they're going to turn the TSA loose on you. And how long did I tell you that they were getting ready for this? And when they started hyping it, get ready for it to happen. They think you're stupid. Okay, America isn't run by America anymore. Here's some of the financial news. Greece to start austerity drive as nation seethes. They don't even owe most of the debt. Over 90% in theirs. All of it has to be paid to foreign bankers. Continuing, state local layoffs to hit record levels. Laying off local government. Being replaced, though, with federal jobs. Feds are federalizing everything. Oh, cops, they told you to write more tickets. They wouldn't lay off. Sorry, they lied to you. That money goes right to the bankers. Bankrupt uh, claim uh, highlights Spanish debt fears. Financial Times. Dominique Strauss-Kahn uh, expected to claim he was given irregularities um, in the way he was arrested. And I've got a bunch of other uh, really key news. China has divested 97% of its holdings in U.S. Treasury bills. Unbelievable report. Uh, continuing here with some of the financial news. The, the London Independence reporting that the housing slump is bigger than the Great uh, Depression. Going All of that to Mike Adams. Going back to last week, I've, I've seen this so many times. Right when Europe's trying to pass laws like our food safety bill, they've already passed Codex Alimentarius to ban most vitamins and minerals. They have a big outbreak. Uh, they have uh, other outbreaks here in the U.S., always by Big Agri in every big case, some big giant factory. And then they, Big Agri gave $17 million in one week in November to try to pass uh, the Food Safety Act, like the Patriot Act for all these names, nothing to do with that, to openly put regulations on farms, ranches, and everybody else. Just incredible, absolutely incredible uh, developments just off the charts, but it failed thanks to Ron Paul and, and listeners and folks that understood what was happening. Uh, and the SWAT teaming of the Amish, all of this is about shutting this stuff down. Uh, it's about creating monopolies. That's what big mega business and big agribusiness does. And so I saw this and I went, wait, what do I know about E. coli? I know it's one of the first bacteria ever engineered. I know in the mid-60s or early 60s, you just pull up manufacturing process of aspartame. The, the military engineered one that would eat toxic waste. They, they've, they've worked on a lot of bacteria that'll do that, like the oil-eating bacteria, but this is different. And I remember the report, and you can pull it up, where uh, they took it and, and then it, what it excretes, it's, it's waste. Bacteria, you know, use the bathroom as well. Their excretia is this highly toxic, addictive, sweet substance. Like antifreeze is sweet. Everything's sweet and good. So they, and they couldn't get it approved until 1981 when Rumsfeld got it approved. Now, then I remember the, uh, the uh, virus sprays 
that they spray on meats they approved six years ago on E. coli, live viruses that eat them, uh, that destroy them. And so I know that, that E. coli is one of the most engineered bacteria out there. And they've, and they've engineered it into plants and all sorts of stuff. And so I said, you know, look for this to be some big agri disaster or something that got out of a lab because they were reporting by Friday that it appeared to be genetically engineered. Well, Mike Adams, great researcher over at naturalnews.com, joining us via video Skype. Forensic evidence emerges that European E. coli superbug was bioengineered to produce human fatalities. That's the newest article today. Yet, uh, yesterday, today he's got food wars, how European health authorities are using E. coli scare to wage economic warfare against vegetable farmers. He joins us now. Mike, uh, right as they try to pass the Cybersecurity Act and this big global UN Act to restrict free speech and take over the web and put in snooping hubs, hack attacks happen. China says it's the West doing it. Right as they try to pass these laws, th these, uh, these outbreaks always happen. I mean, this is getting pretty darn obvious. Well, you're exactly right, Alex. You've laid it out. It's classic problem, reaction, solution. They're using it in uh, in every area, and but especially in agriculture. Every time they want to pass more food regulations, they engineer another disaster and they create a fear campaign. And there are so many agendas that are that they can then pursue with this fear. It's not just to enable them to enact new food regulations and tyrannical legislation and crack down on small farms and you know raid the Amish at gunpoint and things like that. It's also the fact that they can retaliate against Spain. Because remember, Spain stood up against the GMO agenda. Spain said, we don't want GMOs in our country, even as, and this came out of WikiLeaks, by the way, even as the US was working on a plan to force European nations to accept GMOs, this is now retaliation. In a matter of less than a week, they have destroyed much of Spain's agricultural economy, at least those farmers engaged in fresh vegetable farming. So this is an act of economic warfare on that front. It's an act of biological warfare against the innocent victims who are now being harmed by this bacteria strain, which is clearly, it has clearly been bioengineered, and we could probably get into more of that evidence. By the way, Alex. two and a half years ago, we broke down that the flu was engineered, and they because we had documents previous when they engineered the H1N1, hiding in plain view, the London Telegraph article where uh, 30 homeless people in one place given the shot died, uh, the live uh, bird flu virus that killed the ferrets in, in, uh, in the vaccines in 12 countries where they did the test. I mean, we have this long history and you have thousands of biotech companies splicing bacteria with animal, insect, top experts saying it can give rise to mutations. And then immediately when we see some, and, and, the, and the media is saying it, it appears to be genetically engineered, uh, it, it's been altered. Uh, they try to blame farmers for it, and then it, all, it always comes out later. It's either a something that got loose or was manufactured, or it's something that mutated. I, I mean, I know you've written about the virus spray they spray on meat that attacks the E. coli. Yeah, well, it's incredible what they're doing here. We we're watching a circus, a circus of fear mongering. They screamed cucumbers, and everybody stopped buying cucumbers. Then they screamed tomatoes. Then they screamed lettuce. And it, it's like we're watching a circus of health regulator lunatics who are running around destroying food industries, destroying the the, the economics of farmers one by one. It's like I wrote. It's like a Godzilla marching through the city, stomping on farmers tents at the farmers markets they're just destroying this industry with no credibility and they're saying we've got to have government inspectors you've got to have yeah. a license to grow anything because your tomato might kill somebody but in every case i see it's never little farms that do it it's always big mega agra that's right and today wall street journal broke this article which we just wrote about also that says it's not the sprouts just until this morning, they were blaming the organic sprouts from northern Germany. Well, they ran tests on that, and the tests all came up negative. So it's not the sprouts. That's Even the key. The they media, keep blaming a string of organic industry. Right. They, they do. And the, the media in the UK was printing quotes from people based on this fear who were saying, oh, I'm never eating organic again. Well, that's the reaction they want you to have because they want you to be afraid of vegetables. They want you to be afraid of small farms. They want you to be afraid of fresh food because then you'll buy processed dead foods that keep you sick 
and keep you a customer of the pharmaceutical industry. Well, notice, notice uh, 50 years ago, they went and harassed normal milk out of existence because they wanted to be able to boil it and sell bad milk to people. Before yes. you got fresh milk delivered to your door, who wants that service? Statistically, it's much safer than the garbage they sell. Uh, I, I mean, it's the same on every front. Problem, reaction, solution, it's the one trick these guys do over and over again. You, and you go over the evidence of this. I mean, this stuff it has resistance to everything. Uh, go over your articles. Well, you're right. There's something called a genetic analysis of the E. coli strain. And genetic analysis is actually quite advanced from a technical point of view. You can determine what the strain was exposed to in its history to create the current strain. And when you look at this, and that was done by the Robert Koch Institute in Germany, their scientists broke down the genetics of this E. coli strain. It's called O104. And if you look at it, you can read the history, and the history doesn't lie. This strain was exposed repeatedly to all the eight major classes of antibiotics that are sold by the, the drug companies today. This practically guarantees that this is going to cause acute kidney failure, that it's going to cause fatalities in the hospitals. And in fact, this particular strain was engineered with a couple of extra genes that give it even more power. It's like a super powerful, deadly super bug. And the fact is, Alex, this could not have been created randomly in nature with some kind of random mutation. Impossible. It had to have been engineered and then introduced into the food supply in some way. I don't know where it was introduced. We don't know that yet. The story is still developing. I know you're covering it. Well, Maybe it's like the anthrax. Uh, years later, it comes out. Super U.S. government weaponized. Three different patsies they tried to blame. Uh, the last guy they killed in custody, and then that wasn't even a news item. It was Barry that he died in custody. Oh, he did it. And it turned out it was U.S. government. It took hundreds of millions of dollars of equipment to even miniaturize it. And they blamed it on al-Qaeda. I mean, yeah. it, it, it never ends. I mean, it's simple. We have a big criminal structure. And any time they want to shut an industry down or consolidate something, they stage an event. I mean, it wasn't hard to predict there'd be massive hack attacks against governments and industry right as they try to pass the total Internet kill switch media takeover with government messages over your email and cell phone. And magically it happens right as Obama is set to announce his assault weapons ban and gun show shutdown uh, legislation. Uh, the head of Al Qaeda pops out and says, yes, you have too many guns. Muslims get the guns and kill people. Go to the gun shows. I mean, it's it's so ridiculously predictable. Well, and also because it's so effective. The public who, who isn't aware of all of this, they don't understand the dynamics. They don't know about problem, reaction, solution. They are so easily hoodwinked that this tactic works for the global elite. So, of course, they use it over and over again every time they want to pass a new regulation or clamp down on another freedom or convince people to be afraid of something. They can simply engineer it. And now the evidence of this engineering is in the genetic code of the E. coli itself. You can't argue with that. It's written in the DNA. Now, why isn't the mainstream media reporting this? Well, once again, because they're on the side of the global elite who are trying to fool people into thinking that fresh vegetables are, are harmful to you and that we need more food safety regulations and we need more clamping down on small organic farmers. That's the opposite of what we need. We need more local food, small organic farms, and less processed, mechanized, factory-made foods. From and let's the be clear farms. why they get radiation, uh, radiating in the food past. Why this six years ago they got it passed to spray live viruses that, quote, eat the bacteria. They admit it so they can feed you rotten meat, but radiate it so the bacteria aren't live, but you still get the toxins they've excreted. Uh, they come out with the uh, vaccines that they live vaccines of a virus bath and the name of the virus in latin is uh, translated as bacteria eating virus the flanges they 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 spray those on there and if you're a new listener folks i'm not joking just search e uh, fda approves uh, bacteria eating viruses to be sprayed on meat and then that gives rise to mutations, just like uh, antibiotics overuse makes the bacteria get more and more hardy. But this one's had a bunch of stuff added to it out of the clear blue with the media then blaming all the organic farmers. Notice no big agribusiness. It has all the telltale signs of the frame up and they just continue to do this, Mike. It, 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 it's horrible.
Well, a lot of people don't realize this has been going on for such a long time. For example, you can't buy raw almonds grown in America anymore. I know you covered this, Alex, but some of your listeners may not be aware of it. The FDA and the California State Almond Board came in and said you have to fumigate or irradiate the almonds to effectively kill them before you can sell them to American consumers. And why did they do that? Because raw almonds are a type of superfood. In fact, they contain an anti-cancer element that's part of an anti-cancer formula used in Chinese medicine. So one by one, they're going after the foods that can keep people healthy. They're banning the herbs in the EU. I mean, that's already a done deal. Banning the vitamins, the supplements, the By the way, herbs. folks never believed us when we told them about Codex yeah. Alimentarius that was in the bill, the Food Safety Act last year. I mean, people go, well, they wouldn't ban the hundreds of over-the-counter vitamins and herbs yes they did it's happening wake up folks it, it is happening Every, it's it's week by week we find another example of some outrageous accusation against supplements or herbs or organic foods i mean the fact that this whole thing was blamed on germany's organic sprout growers and that now that's completely false but the damage is done alex you know they can't retract that People all over Germany have stopped buying sprouts all over the UK. I mean, this has affected 10 nations in Europe, and the authorities can just shout out a vegetable and everybody will stop buying it. Carrots. Oh, all of a sudden, no one's buying carrots anymore. Lettuce. No more lettuce. Spinach. No more spinach. I mean, this, this is economic warfare against the vegetables. And they know farmers. what they're doing. They just randomly move. They could go test in minutes and, and see if it's that E. coli strain. They don't care. They knowingly every day throw out a new thing to scare everybody. But don't worry. We've got GMO that's safe. We've got irradiated produce, which they're now starting to do. Uh, we've gassed all your produce with sodium fluoride gas. Everything's okay now. We've killed all the food so it's safe. We've taken that raw milk. We're taking that cheese from raw milk. We're taking all those vitamins and minerals from you, and we're going to give you McDonald's food that doesn't even decompose uh, when left on a plate for six months. Well, and it's amazing, too. If they had not taken away raw milk, people could drink the raw milk and get the probiotics from the raw milk, which populate your intestinal flora, which crowd out these dangerous E. coli strains. So raw milk can actually help protect you against these That's outbreaks. right. People eating all the studies show you're mentioning – the bubble boy, you know, he couldn't handle stuff from the outside. Well, it's the opposite. People that have a dog or another animal, it shows you get more buffer flora and are much healthier. It's it's the kids that play in the dirt that are healthier throughout life. That's right. All these people eating dead foods have dead stomachs and are wide open to invading bacteria. They're living in a, more and more in a sterile environment. Even parents, they're afraid to have their kids go outside and touch the dirt, you know? Oh, the evil dirt, how terrible. Well, other science shows that if you're in the dirt and you actually inhale some of the dirt microbes, they increase your cognitive function. They make you smarter. And they also boost your immune function. We need more probiotics. We need more living foods. But instead, the global elite, they're just taking them away one by one, destroying the market. Do they know why breathing in dirt, as I saw that, that new scientist reported on that last year. Why breathing uh, microbes in dirt makes you smarter? It's, it's, uh, it's I guess, it triggers some enzyme reaction, or the olfactory is excited by it, and it causes neural connections to open. I, I know they're not. They don't know why. I'm speculating. Mike Adams, NaturalNews.com. Stay with us. Final segment, straight ahead, right here on the GCN Radio Network. A ton of key news at GCNLive.com. New listeners. That over 4,000 American foster children. In the 1940s, 50s, and 60s, were radiated to death knowingly in radiation tests by the U.S. government. Europe did the same thing. Israel did the same thing. Israel, you know, to their children as well. You think Israel doesn't care about mowing down Palestinians. They don't care about frying their own kids. Same thing with our government. You know about the syphilis and the black men shooting them up with it. Now you know about it in Latin America, shooting the kids up. The UN constantly caught giving people polio, claiming it's a vaccine. So, of course, they would release a weaponized E. coli. In fact, it even came out that back, what was it, in 2001 or 2000, the British government had done a drill and was the source of the weaponized foot and mouth. That was used to target and knock out uh, so many of the farmers there. So yes, these are ruthless killers who want a scientific dictatorship. There's very small numbers of them at the top who use the bureaucracy to, 
to carry this out. Remember Rick Perry trying to force Gardasil that they knew was killing girls in trials on the children of Texas. I mean, folks, we're not just here saying, oh, the government did this. We've learned to watch them. We've learned to study them. We've learned to see who they target. This is 100% stage, Mike Adams. Mike, how long will they go on with the deaths in Germany and the deaths in Europe and the hyping uh, government takeover of everything? Well, they will try to milk this for as much play as they can get. They want to spread as much fear as possible so that they can come in with the reaction solution and have people call for more food regulations. And of course, they're going to crack down on the organic farms and the vegetable producers. And if this doesn't do what they want, They'll just stage another one, Alex. You know, look, it, if you get back to the genetic code of this strain of E. coli, you have to ask who has the technical ability to create this? Because that will point you to who's doing it. And it's really only the drug companies or the government infectious disease organizations, such as the CDC in the United States. Similar organizations across Europe have that capacity. Maybe a university has the capacity, but this is really more of an expert creation of a bioengineered strain of E. coli. Now, if they do trace it back to a food, uh, something like lettuce, let's say, then you have to ask, well, how did it get in the lettuce? Well, that's a simple matter. They could have taken dried E. coli powder and dropped it into a shipment of lettuce or dropped it into a shipment of seeds going to the sprouting company. They could have injected it into the food supply at any point so that they can target a specific food to blame for the outbreak. It's a simple By the matter. way, British intelligence is saying Al-Qaeda might be involved. No proof, but maybe Adam Gadon uh, will pop up and tell us uh, he did it. Maybe bin Laden did it, Alex. <laughs> he swam back out of the ocean and dropped some E. coli on the Germans. I mean, who knows what they're going to come up with next? Uh, any, they could come up with anything, and people would believe it. That's the thing. People are believing this in the mainstream, but of course, fortunately, more and more people are waking up in the alternative media and realizing that that story doesn't make sense. The real story is the story that we're explaining here. This has been engineered. Well, what's the tipping point, though, when the alternative becomes the mainstream? I see that beginning to happen, and that's why the ruling establishment, the social engineers, are bum-rushing society on every front. That's why old Hades is starting to break loose. They're attempting to create enough chaos to pose as saviors to keep themselves in place. Yeah, the tipping point is coming. More and more people are waking up, and those who aren't are frankly dying from things like E. coli or from things like vaccines. I had a guy tell me recently, hey, he thinks vaccines are a global IQ test, and those who fail the IQ test end up with infertility from vaccines or GMOs or fluoride. I mean, that's that's one way to look at it. Not not my favorite way to look at it, but they're testing people. Hey, sure. I, was, I was out this weekend in public. And I was with my children at a restaurant. It was packed. And I was looking at children who were seven, eight, nine years old, and they, they all talked like they were retarded and acted like they were retarded, all mildly autistic. And I was looking at everybody. They were like hit by a mutation ray. Folks, this is scary. Mike Adams, thank you so much. Retransmission starts now. PrisonPlanet.tv.